song. On the uh, Democratic side in Missouri yesterday, there was a primary for Senate, uh, but just barely. Robin Carnahan got a higher percentage of the vote than Daniel Radcliffe would get at a Harry Potter lookalike contest. Almost 84 percent of the vote. On the Republican side, it was a different story. Uh, Senate hopeful Roy Blunt was fighting off so many opponents they could have fielded a baseball team. <laughs> That's the um, <laughs> Kansas City Roy uh uns <laughs> That's really bad. Uh, Mr. Blunt also faced opposition from the Tea Party movement, which fielded its own candidate, Chuck Perguson, uh, which caused lots of drama when Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, founder of the Tea Party Caucus, endorsed not the Tea Party guy, but instead Mr. Blunt. We need Roy Blunt in the U.S. Senate. But you're supposed to be running the Tea Party Caucus. Ah, tea parties were people were furious. So mad. They love Michelle Bachman. They're mad at Michelle Bachman. They're lover. They're mad. They were very upset. They called it a slap in the face, which made for a very interesting, raucous, worth paying attention to Republican Senate primary in Missouri. Rule number 1217 about electoral politics, exciting primaries mean more voters. And that's exactly what happened on the Republican side yesterday. The internecine warfare didn't sink Roy Blunt. He won. But among the very paltry 23 percent statewide turnout yesterday, two out of every three voters came out to vote Republican. So it wasn't really a big, exciting deal that a two-thirds Republican electorate ended up also voting for the symbolic anti-health reform thing that Missouri had on the ballot yesterday. Republicans want it to be a huge deal, but... In the overall context, it was essentially a popularity contest for the idea of as yet unimplemented health reform only among the most motivated activist Republicans in the state of Missouri. What Michael Steele and Mitch McConnell and John Boehner want to froth about as a national referendum on health reform was much closer to a poll of Red Sox fans about how they feel about the Yankees. Still, though, uh, an important reminder of rule number 1,218 of electoral politics. Who's voting is just about as important as who's running. As MSNBC's Dave Weigel wrote at Slate.com this week, during midterm elections, when you don't have a president at the top of the ticket, you see a contraction in the electorate. The electorate gets smaller. And when the electorate gets smaller, it boils down to the hardest core of hardcore, I always vote no matter what voters, uh, which means a traditionally more conservative group. The way Dave put it uh, at Slate yesterday was that Democrats know they are facing a whiter, older electorate this year than they faced in 2008. Eight. So the smaller the expected turnout, the more you should expect to see political tactics that target older, whiter people. And that is starting to explain a lot of what's been going on this year so far, heading into these midterms. Joining us now for the interview is my friend, Democratic political strategist and author of the book, Foxes in the Hen House, How the Republicans Stole the South and the Heartland and What the Democrats Must Do to Run Them Out. Mr. Dave Mudcat Saunders. Hi, Mudcats. Great to see you. Great seeing you, Rachel. You are one of my favorite people to talk to about anything. And I feel like you and I disagree on just about everything about Democratic political strategy. And I still think you are one of the best Democratic political strategists in the country. Well, so, that's a nice thing to say. You make me think I'm wrong all the time. <laughs> <laughs> But let me, well, we do back away. Well, let, let's let's start with this issue about about the electorate. Obviously, you're not going to get the same turnout that you got in the presidential year. What does that mean for political strategy? Thinking about a smaller electorate in the midterms. Well, you know, personally, you know, this health care reform deal, and it, it, there's been so much misinformation out there, uh, twisted information. Uh, first off, I don't think the Democrats ought to be on defense about it. Okay. And, and, and the whole deal, politics, electoral politics, I'm not a civics professor. I'm a campaigner. And, and electoral politics are about offense. And we've got to get away from this, this health care argument. Uh, uh, where I come from in southwest Virginia, uh, you, can't, uh, you can't find anybody that supports it mm -hmm. with a search warrant. I mean, they're just not there. And it's because of misinformation. And, you know, we're, we're, but you think Democrats shouldn't try to counter the misinformation if you're explaining you're losing that whole idea? That, just don't talk about it. Listen, it's the economy. It's what it is. If we're going to hit issues, let's hit the economy. Let's talk about the job loss in America. Let's let's talk about uh, you know things that, that that mean a lot to, to middle America. And of course, you know the president's numbers are low with white working class.
class Americans, and that's the only way that he's going to get them is just, just, just bust, you know. The economy. But how do you end up winning political points talking about the economy when the economy stinks so bad? I mean, because how do you, because you, when, when you're the par party in power, when you're well, the president. Well, it depends. You know, I come from the Jim Webb school of populism, you know, basic Jacksonian democracy, social justice, and economic fairness. Economic fairness does not exist. You know, where I live or anywhere else, you know, throughout mainstream America, it's gone. Uh, I don't know why somebody hasn't, you know, started talking about bringing some of these jobs home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this global economy theory, that's all it's ever been, is a theory. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, what I would go with. Of course, you know, you made a great point there, and the gentleman from Slate. Uh, if 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 I was running a campaign uh, for somebody this cycle, uh, my focus would be GOTV, mm -hmm. and you know you've got to get your people out. And you know B Obama had such an organization. I mean, they've got the names, they've got, uh, and, and fortunately the Democrats have enough money that they can organize great GOTV. So programs. you think the, de the 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 machine that literally turned out voters for Obama, not just just the Obama campaign sort of message and strategy side, but the people who actually went door to door and got voters out, you think that should be sort of uh, 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 reanimated for other Democrats? It can be done again. Democrats. It cannot be done without Obama on a ticket, but we do have those names. Yeah. And we can go and we can get those people and hit them and come. But what's your argument to people? You go to, you, people, aren't motiv people aren't necessarily motivated. Democratic enthusiasm is low heading into November. If you're, if you're training door knockers Everybody's to go out there. Everybody's enthusiasm is low, yeah. except for the Tea Party. I mean, you got to remember in 2008, you know, we were all standing up and screaming. You know, yes, we can, you know, but now... You know, this Tea Party people are the only ones hollering. Yeah. There is no enthusiasm in the Republican. So how do you party. how do you run get out the vote efforts then for Democratic candidates then? How do you get voters enthused enough to actually take time out of their day to go vote on November? What do you tell them? Well, you start talking about issues that hit home, like the lack of economic fairness mm -hmm. is is what you talk about. You talk about jobs. You talk about how we're going to pull out of this thing. I mean, people out here are hurting, Rachel. Uh, I was noticing the other day suicide rates are way up you know, in rural America. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's that tough. And that's what we got to do. We got to talk about, we don't make anything anymore. And, you know, you can't do that forever. You can't just buy, 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 buy and, and not make anything. And I'm, you know, a strong believer. And I can't believe that the Democrats haven't hit on it yet. Somebody to say, hey, what can we do? to get these jobs home. Some of them anyway. I understand the importance of a global economy. Mm -hmm. I do. But I also understand the importance of taking care of our own. And there are a lot of people out there hurting. They don't understand it. And the way that Democrats who are running for re-election, or the way that Democrats like President Obama going around trying to fire up Democratic-based voters for this election should talk about that, is just talking about that as a need for America to get back on track on those things? Or should they be pushing a specific legislative agenda saying, Democrats in Congress pledged to X, Y, and Z about bringing the jobs home, well, about taking that, care of economic affairs? I don't think that, that, that mainstream America right now believes anything. I think that... that uh, 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 I mean, this Tea Party movement, uh, it's, a, it's the greatest thing that ever happened to the Democrats, uh, with, you know, without question. I mean, this girl, uh, Sharon Angle, out in Las Vegas, in Nevada, and uh, I mean, she's a Christian reconstructionist. Now, do you know what that is? No, I probably should, but... Well, uh, what it is, is it means that they believe that, first off, you're going to hell. You better me? understand. Yeah, all yeah. Of, all me of too. Us? Me yeah. Too. And, right. and not, probably 95% <laughs> of the electorate in Nevada is going to hell. And, I mean, for her to come out with comments like, you know, that she was preparing and had had this calling to run against Senator Harry Reid, and she was preparing for it just like Moses prepared. You know, to lead the people through the wilderness for 40 years and to quote gold to my ear, settled in the only place that didn't have oil, that she was being, you know, these experiences of Paul and even Jesus. Yeah. You know, I didn't know Jesus needed training to be son of God until <laughs> I heard Sharon Angle. But, I mean, some of this stuff, I mean, it, it's, it's, it, it's helping the Democrats. Yeah. And, uh, if they can capitalize on it and get out some voters in November. Well, I, th I think the, the get out to vote, the deal is, 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 is you know, you're, 
your Democrats who show up for primaries obviously are your first choices, but you know politics has become a lot like Amway. And uh, you, you know, you tell two, two people. I mean, that, I mean, that's not the wrong slogan, but yeah, the pyramid. Sure. Yeah. Medcott Saunders, Democratic political strategist. Uh, I could talk to you all night. Um, it's good to see you. You haven't been back here long enough. We'll get you back soon. I'll be back. Great to see you, my see friend. You. Great. Take care.